Hello, and welcome to the Gestalt IT Roundtable Series. My name is Tom Hollingsworth, and I am an analyst here at Gestalt IT. In this roundtable series, we like to bring you some interesting topics from the IT space and kind of talk about why they're important to you as an IT practitioner and also kind of give you a heads up about some things that are coming off in the future and how you need to be ready for them. Uh, we bring together some of the greatest minds in the community, along with some very great minds working on the uh, implementation and manufacturing side of the house. And I'd like to take just a few moments for those folks to introduce themselves so you all know who's going to be participating today before we jump into today's topic. So, Terry, why don't you take it away? Hi, Tom. Thanks for being, th thanks for inviting me here. Uh, I'm currently principal architect at Net Craftsman. Uh, we're a consulting company in Maryland, um, although we work all across the country. And in fact, we've done some jobs internationally. My focus primarily is network management and uh, network design. Um, done a little bit of dabbling in security, some in UC. So pretty much the, the gauntlet of things. I'm active online at netcraftsman.com, nojitter.com, techtarget.com, glueware, and LinkedIn. No, right. I do not have a Twitter handle. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Uh, Pete? Uh, I'm going to say mostly ditto, net craftsman, architect, blog, LinkedIn, Twitter, at PJ Welcher. Uh, yeah, we do global work. I've been doing a lot of SD access uh, in the Cisco space lately for a fair size customer, uh, lapping and so on, uh, net management and uh, automation. All right. Thank you for joining us today, Pete. I'd like to introduce our guests from Riverbed, starting with Mr. Bill Kuhn. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, having me. Uh, my name is Bill Kuhn. I'm a principal solutions architect at Riverbed. Uh, been there for the last 10 years and basically spent my whole career in the network and performance monitoring and management in, um, you know, area. So uh, hope to uh, have a good conversation today and uh, give you some of uh, my thoughts on the topics. All right, thank you very much. And John. And I'm John Piddle, uh, Riverbed Services CTO. I've been involved in uh, network performance monitoring and troubleshooting since the early 90s. At Riverbed, I'm responsible for helping our customers plan out our visibility solutions with an emphasis on how to adopt those solutions to bring the most value to the organization. I'm also a, a SharkFest presenter since 2017. Um, and thank you for the invitation today and looking forward to participating in the discussion. All right, well, I wanna thank all of you for joining us today and uh, let's dive into today's topic. We wanna talk a little bit about visibility. This is a topic that has been kind of gaining steam in the uh, networking and honestly into the cloud space as well. We have always had a large amount of data about our networks and our deployments that's just been kind of hiding under the surface. It's We haven't really been able to collect it in a meaningful way to help provide context around things. Uh, if you've ever uh, called your IT department and said things like, well, it's running slow, or I can't get to insert name of application. Uh, this is how we figure out where the actual problem is. But in order to do these kinds of things, we really have to build out a robust infrastructure to be able to monitor and alert us when things are going on. And as this has become more and more complicated, there have been some myths and urban legends that have come up about network visibility and monitoring. And we want to take a few minutes today to just kind of cover the truth about mm -hmm. network and application visibility. Now, I think I, I want to kind of throw this out here to begin with, because I think people maybe need to understand why this is so important. So Terry, I want to start with you. How important is network visibility in today's modern IT environment? It's really essential. You have to know where the problem is. Is it could be it's something on the client. Um, maybe it's a poorly configured client, or there's something else running on the client uh, in an application that's particularly a web application that downloaded a bunch of JavaScript or something like that that has to run in the background on that client is now interacting with some other application, or it could be the network. Um, some of these problems really are due to the network, um, or it could be a server, and we see that. Uh, an awful lot. And so visibility is being able to figure out which part of that stream 
the, the problem lies. Yeah, I would say that that's very important because uh, often in IT, we, we have to spend the first critical hours of our troubleshooting process just trying to figure out where the problem is before we can even start resolving it. And I think that the, the visibility to find that is super important. Uh, Pete, you know, what are your thoughts about this? From your perspective, why do you feel like visibility is such an important aspect to, to IT networking today? Well, I'd like to surface a case study. I've got a customer now who is seeing periodic bursts of traffic on their internet link and it's clobbering other traffic. So they know the rough time of day when it occurs, but they have no idea what's causing it. And unfortunately, they're in the middle of setting up to get capture net flow data. They uh, have a grand plan, but it's taking a while to execute because of some snags, uh, equipment snags. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of my favorites is we, we think this thing is talking to something, but we don't know what or when. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the big problem that visibility has to solve. Uh, now, Bill, I, I want to jump in here and kind of give you guys a chance to talk about this from the riverbed perspective. You know, how important do you see visibility um, being to the end users that you work with on a daily basis? I mean, that's uh, it's actually, you know, I mean, I, it's almost the obvious, right? It's so critical that you know what's going on um, because the business depends on those users accessing the applications that the business depends upon or that your customers are accessing to be able to buy your services. And without visibility, when something goes wrong, you've got an issue that you can't fix and you start to bleed the money. Um, and then you've got the other side. Uh, so that's performance. The other side is more of a security perspective. You know, you don't know who's talking to what or when something is suspicious, you've got to know exactly when that happened, who they were talking to and the impact of that uh, activity. And without a record of that visibility, however you get it from the network, uh, it's a critical requirement just to know what's going on. Yeah, I can't understate the importance of this kind of visibility when it comes to an incident response situation. Um, people are going to be asking lots of questions and you better hope that you have all the right answers. Uh, now, John, you have uh, been doing a lot of work, you know, kind of with Wireshark and things like that. Where, do, where does your visibility perspective come into this? Well, from my perspective, um, as you guys have all said, visibility is essential. Uh, from my perspective, what I've found is I really need to see visibility end to end, ideally from the client all the way through to the server. And so a combination of packets, flow, um, some SNMP data as well to give me the, the, the health of the infrastructure and the interfaces from the real-time uh, monitoring appliances, being able to measure application health, server response time, connection requests, connection failures um, is, is absolutely key. And, you know, there's a constant balance. No one has as enough budget to get everything that they would ever possibly want to get eyes on. So it's a balance between being able to put visibility in the right places to give you enough so that you can get what you need. Um, you know, for example, SNMP monitoring, you can go very broad, perhaps at a, at a really decent price, flow next, and then being able to get it packets, while it might be a little bit more expensive, it gives you the qualitative metrics that you need to get early warning that service is degrading and where you need to take action. Um, I mean, I could go on and on, and I know we want to get on to more questions, but it's, it's the holistic approach is really, really important in being able to tie all of that data together. Um, in a in a way that helps you to correlate what's what's related to what is another key aspect. Now, one thing you mentioned there that I, I picked up on that I think we kind of want to maybe jump into a little bit, and that's the idea of where the data needs to be captured from. I know that a lot of companies that have expertise in the uh, space of, of monitoring connections between devices say things like, oh, well, you know, just do an R-SPAN to us and we'll capture all the packets and we'll tell you everything you need to know, or just stick stick our middle box here in the middle of this uh, data center trunk and and you don't have to worry about it. But we're starting to see more and more that we have to be able to capture packets at the endpoint level. Why is it so important that we need to be able to capture on either end of the endpoint to be able to get that holistic view that we talked about? This is a topic near and dear to my heart. Uh, the last couple of years, I, I did a couple of Shark Fest 
fest sessions um, politely called split brain, making the point that you really need to look at performance from both the perspective of the client and the perspective of the server. Because what you see at the packet level, and even indeed, if you're looking at real time monitoring, the metrics that you see reflect a little bit differently depending on how close you are to the to the particular uh, talker, if you will, whether that talker is the client um, or the or the server. Um, kind of with regard to where you put it, what I've been talking with customers about is the need to do literally do engineering around where you put your visibility. And that engineering really needs to be driven by requirements. And those requirements should be linked to something that's important to the business. So requirements like, um, you know, in, uh, ingress, egress traffic, wherever your, your servers are hosted may be one requirement. Being able to see your DNS traffic may be another requirement or your LDAP traffic or your single sign-on. So your key infrastructure services rate are you know they bubble up to the top in terms of priority because if they go down or if there's any degradation of those services everything in the environment is going to suffer so being able to prioritize your requirements and then understanding what is my current capability to meet those specific requirements. Do I fully meet it? Do I partially meet it? Do I just simply not meet it at all? In which case it's a huge gap. And then that rational objective view becomes a budgetary discussion with the management to say, hey, we've got some risk here because we're exposed and here's the details and let's put together a plan of how we're going to address that risk. Now, Pete, how does this look from your practitioner side of things? You know, why is it important for me to be able to collect data at the endpoint level? Well, there are kind of two ways you can tackle user experience. One is to put some sort of agent on the endpoint. The other is to look at packet capture and packet replay. Um, what I like about picking it up on the endpoint is uh, you're distributing some of the workloads. So I know Riverbed and some other vendors have had uh, good products that you stick in the middle of the user to data center flow, but as things are getting spread around and as the speeds are picking up, that can get uh, pretty costly and to some extent um, miss traffic that's going via other paths. So is there a choke point on, in the path to the main data center and the cloud becomes one of the questions. If you capture it on the endpoint, uh, well, there's a challenge in that you have to know which user's got a problem. Doing it across all users is again, a scaling issue, possible, but scaling and cost. Um, but once you know who's affected, then that's a great place to capture it because you're seeing everything that the user, um, that it affects user interaction. That's a very interesting point that you bring up, Pete, because it's something that I think a lot of people have kind of maybe uh, marginalized at first is the idea that, oh, well, the endpoints are on my network, so I can look at them wherever I, whenever I want, except they may not be talking to servers on your, you know, in your on-premises data center. A lot of workloads are moving to the cloud. Uh, even in the years before 2020, we were starting to see digital transformation moving workloads and applications into AWS and Azure and GCP. And uh, I would say that that the events of the year 2020 have not done nothing but accelerate that. So now we could deal with users who are not even touching infrastructure where our traditional tools might be deployed in line. Um, you know, Terry, I think you just said work from home. Uh, not in so many words, but but yeah, I mean, work from home, work from a coffee shop, work from wherever I'm capable of working from. And, and I, you know, I'm kind of curious kind of how that looks to to you folks out there, you know, is is the shift from users working in an office in an enterprise data center, moving to working from home or anywhere to in the cloud, driving a difference in the way that you try to do visibility for them. Yeah, I, I think it is absolutely. Um, users are, are in places where they don't even control the infrastructure that they're running on. You don't control the infrastructure. It's a carrier of some sort. So how are you gonna do diagnosis in, in those scenarios? You're gonna to have to have something at either the, uh, the client endpoint or the server endpoint. Uh, and the server endpoint quite often these days is in the cloud. Now, how do you handle the case where the server is a SaaS server? 
That's an interesting one. Okay. So it's software as a service. So you don't even own the servers. You don't own the, the service um, infrastructure. So you can't put anything there. So you need some method of determining what's going on. And there, being able to monitor at the client endpoint is, is going to be your best bet. Yeah, I would agree. Bill, you know, how is Riverbed helping to solve this, you know, m cloud migration problem and in, in providing additional visibility in these cases? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think of two words as, you, as we're talking about this, and it's basically perspective and compromise. And I'll explain what I mean by that. It's all about perspective, right? That's what visibility really is, is what kind of, vis where do I get my visibility? And in these days, as folks are moving more and more applications to the cloud or going direct to the cloud, companies have to compromise essentially on how they can get that visibility. Do we bring everything that the users are accessing through VPNs into our network, into a co-location that we have some control as it goes in and out of that cloud environment. So as long as you've got that perspective of what can I instrument to be able to handle this new as well as the old, right? We can't forget about the old, you know, with from Riverbed's perspective, we've been in this business a long time leading this market and we've got instrumentation that can help prepare and successfully migrate applications to the cloud. And so when you say, hey, you know, we've got to instrument on the user, there's some folks out there listening to this that are going to say, we just can't do that, or we don't want to do that for whatever reason. And so there's all sorts of compromise that is available. It says, well, we, can we bring that traffic back to a location that you can get uh, access to? Or if not, you know, like, like you say, with a SaaS-based application, there is limited visibility. You've got to be on that end user. You don't have a choice. And then as you migrate into these infrastructures of service-based applications where you do have some ability to be able to get into the packets, to be able to get into flow technology, some sort of visibility that that cloud provider provides you, you can combine that with visibility that you have in and out of your network that may be accessing these clouds uh, applications as well. But the whole point, sort of like John's point as well, is bringing that all together so that we can bridge that gap of saying we're monitoring that traditional data center and on-prem that isn't going away anytime soon. Sure, it may be dwindling, but it's still here for a while. And then merging that with data that's actually using the same type of instrumentation uh, to merge that kind of visibility uh, in, in and out of the cloud. And I think that's a really important point that you bring up there, Bill, is that a lot of enterprise IT departments are looking at these investments that they've made in this tooling and in these deployments, and they're they're frustrated because they don't want to dump them right now. They don't. They're like, I'm I'm not going to get my value out of this, and so they want to hold on to them and they want to keep using them. And like you said, maybe even you know having users VPN into a central location to do traffic monitoring and things like that. But at the same time, they want to offer this more modern experience, this ability to, you know, work from different types of client devices, whether they're tablets or phones or or non traditional laptop type things. Um, you know, do you see this kind of I don't know uh, this melding of those technologies uh, being something that helps drive the way that we look at the visibility by saying, you know, you've got to be able to do both and you need to go with a company that maybe has the capability of doing that now, because if you sell out for one and neglect the other, let's just say you're, you're very focused on cloud monitoring and you forget about your on-premises deployments, that you could potentially cause some problems down the road if there are applications or workloads that are not capable of moving to the cloud? Absolutely. I mean, we get that, asked that all the time is, is essentially any you know, sort of cloud, any, any customer of ours these days is really looking at the cloud as a, as a strategy to implement new and, and improved applications. And so we're asked to be able to say, hey, not only can you monitor what we've got in our legacy data center, it, you know, if you can't monitor the cloud, we're not gonna do business with you. And so that's the idea is to be able to evolve with the technology to instrument in that new environment, both on that end user, both close to those application servers, as close as you can get to them, and you can get very close in infrastructure as a service, but that's the idea is to bring that all together into that unified platform, leverage the, the available information from that cloud provider, but also sort of complement that with, with uh, the packets and flow technology that is certainly available from Riverbed to be able to um, isolate problems, to be able to confirm or validate what the cloud vendor may be telling you about the performance of that application in the cloud.
With uh, SD-WAN, um, is a lot of emphasis on direct internet access for latency. And as people, as companies go global, that's becoming critical because backhauling from India to the U.S. to hit something in the cloud may not be very uh, kind to uh, in terms of latency. So I like the term hybrid, uh, emphasizing sort of what Bill just said, namely, you're going to have people going to traditional applications through the office network, VPN and so on, but they may also be doing some bypass and going straight to the cloud. And the only way you're going to have visibility is to have that on the endpoint. So you have this nice little agent there that can uh, snoop on what's going on. And I see other potential for that because if you have a presence on the laptop or the end device, maybe you can provide other statistics, uh, RF signal being one of them. Yeah, I, I've seen that being a, a bigger issue now more than ever because uh, this wireless network that I have at home, while designed by wireless experts, was not designed by the best wireless experts and was not purchased with the <laughs> enterprise purchasing budget. So maybe providing a little context as to why my microwave oven keeps knocking out my IoT devices would, would be important. So I you mean, installed uh, your own network? I, well, of course I did. I'm the networking nerd, right? <laughs> but that also Couldn't means that, that I'm support and I am the throat to choke when my user base suddenly can't get on Zoom calls or whatever platform we happen to be using. So, I mean, uh, you know, obviously providing visibility to the stakeholders here at my house would be super important because that means I don't have to sleep on the couch tonight. Amen. Yeah, yeah. well, it's all those legacy BG devices. That are yeah, using exactly. The, yeah. The, I'd like to... I'd like to just jump in again on the endpoint capture um, because it's something we do quite a bit. I, it, it's products that we sell, and when I'm when I'm consulting with um, some of our largest customers, they they purchased a um, remote control packet capture, host based packet capture technology that they literally bake in to their laptop build and to their server build. So if, you know, for those folks who have the right privileges in the, in, in IT support, um, they're able to establish a continuous capture on every device. So like, for example, my laptop, I've got about three or four days worth of, of packets, depending on how, how, how many Zoom conferences I'm in. Um, and it turns out to be hugely valuable because when I'm, if I'm reporting an issue, I can, of course, get to, get to my capture, but like if Bill's having an issue, um, he and I can collaborate. We can get packets off of his endpoint device, look at them with our advanced analytics tools and get to pretty close um, diagnosis of, is it the microwave that's causing your issue or is it something in the internet or is it something uh, actually on the server end? So um, that endpoint concept is hugely relevant. I kind of take for granted that, you know, with, with our customers, we've been using that technology for so long. Um, I kind of take for granted that it's, it, it's probably not as widespread outside of the riverbed eco, ecosystem uh, as I might have thought. So it's, uh, it's very hugely valuable, absolutely valuable. So I want to take a moment and I want to talk just real quickly about the progression that we've had in this kind of networking monitoring and visibility type um, environment where, you know, initially we were very focused on packet. I mean, we still kind of use packet capture as a uh, as a, a general term designed to say we're looking at the the information that's flowing across a wire. But then we, as we've already mentioned here in the, the panel, we've talked a little bit about not only is it important to capture individual packets, but also to constitute them into flows so that we understand the importance of how the flows all relate to each other. But we're also seeing a lot of people who are talking about those bundles of flows together in the context of an application. And as more applications are being hosted in the cloud and run as software as a service or being run on top of infrastructure and platform services, how important is it for us to be able to be able to look at, say, Office 365 or a hosted Microsoft Teams call and be able to diagnose the uh, visibility issues within the context of the application itself? Um, I can jump in on that one. Um, so like our other topics, also extremely important. It's part of that bigger picture of, of holistic visibility. And you know, one of the challenges with um, uh, with those technologies is the server IPs keep moving, so you can't really rely on a server IP to know. Okay, the application is running on that server, so um, 
the technology that we're using within our um, different devices and both packet capture and packet analysis, as well as WAN optimization, is using signature-based application identification. So looking at the, the, at the packet level and looking for different signature characteristics, like, for example, the server name in the, in the client, hello, to give you a clue as to what actual SaaS service is it. So for example, our, uh, um, our customers, as well as internally here, we're able to isolate um, SFDC traffic, Office 365 traffic, Azure cloud traffic, Box, Workday, because all of these have unique signatures that allow us to classify the traffic with an application ID that we can then group all of those flows together, like what you were talking about, and then even break it down by client and then organize those clients by, by site, by region, by work, work from home or on a public internet um, facility. So being able to kind of characterize that performance profile of those key applications, when you don't know the server IP, that's a pretty big deal to be able to have that visibility and then get early warning of degradation, like, oh, I can't open a connection, the connection's failing, or I have an unusual amount of retransmissions. Like across the internet, it's just given, you're going to have some retransmissions. But if all of a sudden you have a huge increase in round trip time or latency or a huge increase in retransmissions, you know something is up somewhere between the client and the server. Most likely in the internet, but you've, you've, you've got the forensics data you need to kind of correlate and figure out, okay, where's, where's the most likely location that the problem is occurring? So to your point, yep, it's hugely valuable. Um, and, and you need to be able to do it without counting on knowing the server IP. You have to have another way of determining what the actual service is that the client is, is accessing. Yeah, I would say that that's uh, wanting to know the IP addresses of the devices that we want to monitor is and, and have visibility on it is a very old antiquated way of thinking. And when you look at the way that that things work now, that's just not the case. I mean, you know, Terry, is this something you guys are seeing in the field? Are our organizations starting to move to this application based type of uh, reporting? That's the only possibility that, that exists. <laughs> if you can't depend on the, the addresses of the servers, then you have to rely on the, the signature of the application. Now, um, we had a couple of, of interesting case studies uh, back from our, our history of doing operations. And we wound up with one customer. We were using actually a, a fairly, well, number of years ago, we're using a, an application that Riverbed has uh, called application response. And uh, we were using that to, to look at some links at the customer site, customer had a copy of this. And it was really, really interesting to see on one T3 link. Now T3 links, not too slouchy, you know, 45 megabits. So it's, it's a reasonable link, but they were complaining about slow application performance at this site. And we got to looking at the traffic and we determined that a bunch of the traffic was coming in from the internet. Now, in those days, we could look at IP addresses and we determined um, it was uh, Pandora, Limelight Networks, Akamai. The last two were content providers. Uh, so it was like, oh, uh, Netflix downloads uh, <laughs> and that sort of thing. So we, we loosely classified the, the additional traffic as th that was not coming from their applications as entertainment traffic. And we were able to apply QoS and, and then all of a sudden the application was fine, but you know, the internet access is a little bit sluggish these days <laughs> was the response. And they were talking about the fact that, that their Pandora and stuff like that was getting a little sluggish or network downloads or movie downloads were taking a little bit of extra time. Yeah, I would say that when you look at the way that we've changed or the way we have worked in the last, say, 12 months, the applications we thought were the most important for what we did ended up not being the ones that we seem to be using all day long. I mean, I would have said that, you know, video chatting programs probably wouldn't have been very important in January. And now look at us. I mean, you know, we spend almost all of our time on them now. So I, I like the idea that we're starting to take a more holistic approach to what we're using as opposed to just monitoring the pieces of the road that carries that traffic. 
Yeah, I really like the, the ability to look at the client or at the endpoints and being able to see the application traffic there because then you can say, okay, well, I'm seeing this signature for this traffic, this other signature for this other set of flows. And therefore one is application, one is entertainment or whatever it el else it is. You're able to even more easily classify that. stuff. I could have used that uh, for a consulting engagement a few years back. A uh, customer had spent a lot of money on upgrading a major application. They wanted to demonstrate performance improvements. Um, and we had packet captures from the middle of the network, but it was a Microsoft cluster that was shuffling data between the hosts. And we didn't have visibility in that because we didn't have end host monitoring capability, ownership problems and so on. Um, and we ended up with, gee, when we put up a synthetic workload and we increase the workload, the uh, traffic we're seeing does not increase uh, linearly. It's much sublinear not growing the way we would expect it. So where the heck is the missing traffic? Never did find out, just ran out of time. Yeah. Um, at one point, I, I wanna make one point on that application layer visibility, because you, you think about it, uh, one big uh, problem for packet-based technology is encryption, right? Everything is encrypted <laughs> and it's getting to almost be impossible. But until TCP goes away, uh, TCP analysis will still provide value using packets It'll, mm -hmm. as described here. But as more and more applications, you know, especially these SaaS based, it's, you can't even get the key even if uh, it was possible. Um, and, and so the idea I think, and, and Riverbed's doing this as well, the strategy moving forward for those types of application layer visibility uh, solutions you've got to leverage APIs or some sort of availability that the vendor is making, you know, for like a Zoom call, they make it available, right? To where you can troubleshoot users uh, performance via their API. And so the idea, I think, for anyone considering looking at visibility solutions down the road, especially at an application layer that is encrypted uh, and, and without the ability to decrypt, at least hopefully, um, you've got to rely on these APIs, or in the case of an agent on the end user, do it before it becomes encrypted. So one of those two methods, I think, as more and more things become unavailable via packets, um, we're going to have to rely on. It's kind of interesting in a customer context, we've got one budgetary lag can be a problem. So we've got a customer that installed a man in the middle box with 10 gig of capability. Unfortunately, it's surrounded by multiple 40 gig links. Yeah, that's uh, that's the feed problem that we always run into is the, is we have lots of uh, east and west bandwidth to get packets back and forth as fast as possible, but the devices in the middle may be not able to keep up with that that rate of traffic. And I think that kind of speaks to an important point that if you've been listening to this panel so far, you probably have picked up on in the undertext of it all. Networking is complex now. When you think about the way that we're, you know, working from anywhere, the way that we have tried to digitally transform from on-premises equipment only into the cloud or some hybrid thereof, being able to provide visibility at all levels across all of your users to the stakeholders that matter is not the easiest task in the world. And since we have some of the brightest minds in the networking space here, I kind of want to go around the horn real quick. And I just want to simply ask, what is the most important thing that practitioners and operations folks out there need to consider when it comes to managing visibility across these entirely complicated networks in the state that we're in now? And I want to start with you, Pete. Comprehensive coverage. If you have blind spots, you have stuff going on you can't see, that's a problem. Murphy's Law says that's where your problems will be. I'd say that's probably pretty fair. Uh, Terry, what's the most important thing we need to think about for network visibility? Find a tool that you will use. <laughs> there are lots and lots of people get the tool, tool du jour sort of syndrome <laughs> or the, the new shiny tool and it, it comes in, but it doesn't get wide widespread integration into an organization and it makes it really really hard okay there's one expert but that expert went on vacation or heaven forbid they left for another firm and now what I happens could, to the tool 
Um, I've been so, using the term evangelist. You want somebody who's going to sell their coworkers on the tool. And, and train them. So you need to get trained up on how to use these tools and how to make them effective. And, uh, and effectiveness is, is really it. That, that's not a really great word to use at this point, but they, they need to be evangelists themselves. So, Exactly. Uh, John, from your perspective, what's the most important thing people need to be considering when it comes to solving these complicated visibility challenges? Well, I, I mean, the, the, the two that we've heard so far, comprehensive, what I would also call holistic end-to-end -end, um, and adoption, you know, th those are, I mean, they cover a very broad gambit. And um, one, one of my roles that I, that I handle at, at Riverbed is I'm the owner of a service that we call the Digital Performance Center. And the reason I bring that up is because we have found that is a really strategic way of addressing both end-to-end -end holistic comprehensive visibility, where we've got a team of people who can um, uh, engineer that visibility, evangelize that visibility, um, make sure people are using it effectively, and also make sure that the, the business is getting the value of the investment, because it is an investment. And, and to the point earlier about people who buy tools and then don't use them, I mean, think of the, the business cost of dropping budget to buy something that only gets limited use. I mean, it's, it's horrific. And, and we see it all the time. Um, so so this, this concept of the digital performance center is um, like a horizontal layer of performance engineering skills that help each of the different siloed teams, the server team, the network team, security, cloud ops, storage team, DevOps, QA, everybody who stands to benefit from effective use of performance data this horizontal team, horizontal team helps to create effective process governance, skill targets, um, uh, workflows, and collaboration between these different teams so that you end up with a really comprehensive performance program that gives you the, the best visibility at the, at, the, at the price that you're willing to pay, right? Because not everybody has as much money as they would love to, to have. So you do have to make trade-offs and then making sure that everyone who stands to benefit from that data is actually using it and using it in effective ways that makes the IT stakeholders really feel as though IT is in fact delivering for the business, addressing productivity issues for the business and helping the business to grow. So it's a, it's a really kind of strategic approach that incorporates all of these things that we've been talking about into, into a services led uh, type of engagement. All right, uh, Bill, what's the most important thing that people out there need to be thinking about when it comes to solving these complicated visibility issues? Yeah, you know, I'll certainly uh, second all those uh, recommendations so far, but, you know, it's basically, you know, our strategy here at Riverbed is, is uh, you've got to start somewhere, but you've got to eliminate visibility gaps. And what I tell people is you've got to, you know, the more, like John says, and, and what I said earlier about compromising, the more eyeballs you can have on that network, the better. And you've got to start somewhere and you've got to eliminate those visibility gaps. And I, I call those the, you know, the three levels of network telemetry points, the, the device level metrics, you know, typically through SNMP these days, um, the flow details that give you things that SNMP can't give you. And then of course, down deep into the packets that can give you data of application performance that neither of the other two can. And when you have that complete picture and you're instrumented where you are, you're not sitting there when there's a problem saying we don't have visibility into that. And then to sort of complement that idea is, you know, we're not able to do everything with SNMP flows and packets, right? We may need to integrate somehow with data from the users, from the servers, from the SaaS providers. And so being open to, you know, choosing a solution that tries to bring together as much as it can, but still play nice with others, right? Use like the RESTful API to basically share data so that customers can bring that together into this digital performance center that John is talking about that can eliminate those visibility gaps so that when things do hit the fan, you're able to solve those problems as fast as possible. And if I could just add one more 
um, uh, word on that because we haven't really brought it up yet. I think it's implied, but it's it's best to make sure we talk about it explicitly. And that is the ability to correlate all of this data across these different domains. You know, the, the, the network domain, the server domain application and user device domain. So being able to correlate that data and, and determine quickly, where's a root cause? How can I combine this data together in effective ways so that I can very quickly determine, is it a network issue? Is it an application issue? Is it a server issue, internet issue, third-party cloud, third-party partner, and user device? I mean, the complexity is only growing as we've talked about the complexity of the environment. So, so being able to bring all of that data together in useful ways, um, whether that's visual or through analytics uh, is an important part of the puzzle as well. It's, it's hard to answer the question, what's the one <laughs> most important thing? Because there's many elements that really need to come together. And I think we've, I think we've, covered, we've covered those. And I see skills is another part People have to understand how to interpret the data that's being produced. I mean, any tool you buy will produce pretty charts and pretty graphs and, and tables, but being able to interpret it correctly and know when those tables are actually giving you bad data, you know, um, that, that's another key aspect of it. So it's, it's people process, it's tools, it's governance. Um, it, it's it's all of these things combined together as, as part of a big a bigger uh, what I would call a performance management strategy. Yeah, and I think that that John, that's a really important point that a lot of people probably need to take away from this discussion is that it is a very complicated problem, and it's something that you need to be addressing at multiple layers. You need to understand the problems that you're trying to solve and where you're trying to solve them. You need to see the things that you have, but you also need to know the things you're not able to see and be able to get a hold of that information. And then you need to have people that are skilled and trained to be able to give you the information at a stakeholder level to understand what's going on. And this is not something that you can do overnight. This is not something that you can do with a single tool. This is something that you need to have a strategy built around, that you need to have the right mix of software and potentially hardware to understand it. And you need to have this uh, all put together and ready to implement in a series of deployments, not just a one shot, because this is something that will continue to be an important part of your network, not only now, but in the near future. Um, now, obviously, we've had a couple of folks on from Riverbed, and I'm sure that they have a lot of great solutions that'll be able to help you out with this. John, if people want to learn a little bit more about Riverbed's network visibility solutions and how you guys are helping to solve these problems, where can they go to learn about this? Well, certainly riverbed.com. Um, there's a services section that, that where we talk about the Digital Performance Center. We just um, completed a... Uh, uh, riverbed user group set of seminars that's at riverbed.com you can launch those to launch those to review the recordings we've got in the ballpark i think about 40 different tech technical really technical sessions um, i've done a couple there the performance building up building a performance command center art of troubleshooting bill's got a great session there around getting the most effective use out of your npm data uh, it, it's it's really a, a nice technical um, deep dive into our products and our services. Uh, Bill, I'm sure you've got some thoughts on that as well. Do you want to add to that? I was just going to say everybody can call John Piddle at 555. <laughs> <laughs> now, certainly, we've got webinars that are always uh, scheduled and available afterwards on demand, but I would certainly check out our website and uh, get Get involved, uh, you know, with your account team. Uh, there's certainly uh, there's all sorts of YouTube uh, videos that are available that talk about our product set. But yeah, it's uh, the the good sessions are basically available off our website for as well as details of what we can provide. And, and right. if I could, if I Go could ahead, just John. add uh, two two more things quickly. Um, so also uh, there's education.riverbed.com. Um, there's a, a, a course that I authored called Performance Management Foundations. That course is free to anyone. You do not have to be a customer. You don't have to own any Riverbed software or hardware. 
you can uh, self-serve, register, and take that course, Performance Management Foundations. I think we just passed the 6,000 student mark, which is very exciting for me personally. Um, so that's a good place to kind of get your head around uh, performance management as an IT strategy. And, and there's no talk of products. We talk architecture, we talk requirements, we talk about um, deployment strategies and best practices. There's no mention of any products. It's product agnostic. Um, and then there's a, another thing I would throw out there if we have time is um, I did a Shark Fest session called Defining a Requirements-Based Packet Capture Strategy. Um, that was 20, I believe it was 2017 and 2018. And that's a, that's a nice kind of exploration into how would one approach defining the requirements and then what technologies are available to build out a packet capture strategy and how would you deploy it and how would you integrate it with a holistic end-to-end -end capability. And that's also um, product agnostic. So it really talks about the, the methods, um, the principles, the considerations that you need to be thinking about. So that's that's in uh, uh, Sharkfest retrospective 2017, 2018, uh, also a good session. So thank All you right. for letting me share those. Oh, no problem, John, and thank you. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about some of the things that we've been covering uh, with Riverbed, uh, you can always head over to gestaltit.com. Um, we've got a lot of great information over there on a variety of information technology topics, including uh, some of the visibility that we talked about here today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign out here, but for all of our great guests, both uh, you know our community members as well as our partners, uh, we want to say a big thank you for tuning in. We hope that this was informative and that you uh, have a great takeaway from this roundtable, and we hope that that makes your life a little bit easier in the coming months and years when it comes to solving the hard IT challenges.